Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk about inspecting joist hangers on decks. So this has to be one of the most common home inspection issues that comes up related to decks. We find joist hangers installed wrong all the time. Now, on just about every house that's built, you're going to have joist hangers. It's these metal brackets that get used to support the wood members when they come up against another piece of wood. Almost always at the house, you're gonna have joist hangers. And if you have a certain way of constructing the deck where the joists are not resting on top of a beam, if they're gonna to go to the end of a beam, you're surely gonna have joist hangers. So we see these all over the place. We see them on almost, it's, I don't think I've ever seen a deck that didn't have joist hangers. They need to be done right. The manufacturers are very specific about how it's supposed to be done. And I'm gonna go over all of the most common stuff that we find done improperly. So to start off with, and by the way, I'm gonna be referring to joist hangers made by Simpson Strong Tie. They're probably, they're, they are the biggest manufacturer of these devices. I'd estimate 90% of the hangers we see out there are made by Simpson. It's not a slight to the other manufacturers. There's nothing wrong with theirs. This is just the most common one we see. So I'm gonna re be referring to a lot of their illustrations and their specific requirements. But manufacturer to manufacturer, they're very similar. So most common thing, every home inspector knows this, missing nails. Every one of these holes in a joist hanger needs a nail. If you got a missing nail, the fix is very simple put a nail in, that's all there is to it. Next is using screws instead of nails. Manufacturers specify nails in their joist hangers. They don't want you using screws. They do not have the same shear strength. The one exception is if you're gonna have a structural screw intended just for this. For instance, Simpson makes a structural screw and it is okay to use these in joist hangers. You know it's the right one because it has this hex head. This is an especially short one. Typically, they're gonna specify a two and a half inch structural screw, but you get my point. If, I, if I'm not seeing a hex head on a screw, it's surely the wrong one. Now, I talked about how you need nails. You also need the right nails. Manufacturers specify a 10D nail for just about all of these holes in a joist hanger. You can't use the little short guys. For, for some joist hangers, one like this, they do make a special nail. It's a one and a half inch 10D nail, and the nail comes this way. It goes right into the side of the joist, and they make it short so that it doesn't come all the way through the other side of the hanger. And then for a little while, it got the name of a joist hanger nail, and then everybody got the idea that, okay, these are the right nails you're supposed to use for the entire joist hanger. That's wrong. You always need to use a full size 10D nail unless otherwise specified by the manufacturer. It's especially important on, this, on the cross shear nailing. Manufacturers make these joist hangers where you've got nails that are supposed to go in at a 45 degree angle. This nail is supposed to go in here, it goes through the joist and then into the ledger board and almost out the back side of the ledger board for cross shear nailing. If you're using the wrong nails, the little short 10D nails, they don't even begin to go through the, the backside of the joist. They don't even touch the ledger board. How do we know they're wrong? Well, there, there's two ways to figure this out. Number one is to look underneath the joist. Sometimes you'll have a little space between the joist and the ledger board, and you can actually see the tips of the nails where they don't even touch the ledger board. That's an easy way to do it. Now, if the joist is butted all the way up against the ledger board, as it really should be, one way to figure that out, if I suspect they're wrong, I would carry this around with me in my tool pouch. It's a tiny, cute little pry bar. And I could just pick out a nail, I'd get up on my little ladder, I'd pick one of the nails, and I'd try popping it out. If it's the wrong nail, it'll come out quite easily. Those one and a half inch nails have very little holding power. If it's the right nail, ain't no way I'm getting it out with this thing. And by the way, what do I do after I pop it out? I, take, I hold it up, I put it on my tape measure, I take a picture of it, I document it in my inspection report, and then I tap it back into the hole. And it takes nothing to tap it back into the hole. It wasn't doing anything to start with. Not a big deal to pop that out. How do you fix it? 
This is such a common issue that Simpson Strong Tie actually has a document telling you how to repair this defect. They say pull the nails out, get our little number nine by two and a half inch long structural screws and replace every one of those nails with one of these screws. That's how common this is. Okay, that's screws. Next one will be the wrong hanger. If you're working with dimensional lumber and that's almost all that you ever have on a deck and by dimensional lumber I'm talking 2x8s, 2x10s, 2x12s, 2 by whatever it's a piece of wood. If you're using one of those you're going to use a traditional hanger meant for that size lumber. If you're using engineered lumber which is typically used inside the house we're talking about trusses or something like that, floor trusses they will have hangers that are designed for those. They're going to, going to be a different size. You cannot mix and match hangers with different types of lumber. The hanger needs to match the type of lumber you're using, otherwise it's not going to be the right size. Next, if you have an angle where you've got a portion of the deck that's not perpendicular to the joist, you've got an angle on your deck, you need to use something called a skewed hanger. It's a hanger designed just for this. They make products to accommodate these funky angles and that's all you can use. You cannot simply take one of these hangers and kind of sort of try to twist a piece of wood in there or bend the hanger to get the wood to fit in there. You need to use a skewed hanger. So that's another issue is just using, uh, using the wrong hangers entirely. Another issue is lack of a full ledger board. The entire joist needs to butt up against a full depth ledger board. You can't take a ledger board here and then stick a couple of nails in the hanger and have it hanging down off the ledger board with no backing. We see a lot of damaged joist hangers. As I mentioned, joist hangers aren't supposed to be field modified. Now if you got a skewed hanger, you might need to bend that a little bit to match your angle. That's fine. Those are intended to be altered. But the most common thing we see is when you have a joist hanger all the way at the end of the ledger board. Let's say my hand is the ledger board and you got it right here. Well, they don't want the, the joist to be set in from the end of the ledger board a little bit. So they move this over. Now it lines up at the end of the ledger board. And then we take this flange and we just bend it 90 degrees and then nail it into the end. That's always improper. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not that big of a deal but it's technically wrong and there is a way to fix that. They make these devices called, uh, it, it, these have concealed flanges where instead of the flanges being on this side, the flanges are on the inside. And you'll say, okay, well, well what about nailing? I mean, doesn't that, doesn't that change our nailing pattern? Because we don't have this cross shear nailing. You do end up with more nails. Uh, here you've got four nails going straight into the ledger board and then four going at an angle. With one of these you'll notice, and this is the same size, this is a 2x6 hanger. On this one you've actually got six nails going straight in, six full size nails. So it's supposed to be the equivalent strength. I'm not looking at a load table but uh, close enough. So there is a way to address the end of a ledger board. Next we've got rusted hangers. We, we don't see this a ton, but for the last 20 years or so, we have been using a more aggressive pressure treatment or preservative treatment in the lumber used on decks. And the newer stuff we're using eats away at steel. So you need to have a special coating on the hangers that's designed to be in direct contact with the newer treated lumber. If you're using a Simpson product, they indicate that, they, they call it, uh, it's, it's a Z-Max hanger and it's, uh, I don't know if you can make out the, uh, no you can't, my camera isn't going to focus. We'll have a picture of, <laughs> of the label and all of the model numbers are going to end in Z. Now as a home inspector, I'm not checking the model number on every one of these hangers, but I am looking for rust. And if we see any rust, then we'll check, hey, is it the right hanger? Probably isn't. So rusted is another issue we come across. The next issue is an improperly sized hanger. Now, I'll be honest, we don't see this wrong all that often. I think what home inspectors usually end up writing up is they say that a hanger is too small when it's really not. 
In reality, you can use a hanger that is 60% the size of the wood that you're hanging. And if you do the math, they, they've sized these hangers very carefully. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but what it comes down to is that you can always step down one size on your joist hanger. So if you're using a 2x12 piece of lumber, you can use a 2x10 hanger. If you have a 2x10 piece of lumber, you can use a 2x8 hanger. If you have a 2x8 piece of lumber, yeah, you know where I'm going with this. It is acceptable. Now on a 2x4, you need a 2x4 hanger. The math doesn't work out there. Okay, so my, my point there is that this is usually not a big deal. When this gets written up in home inspection reports, it's usually home inspectors being wrong about this detail and it's perfectly acceptable. Next, we've got a joist installed too far away from the ledger board. The manufacturer says ideally your joist is going to come right up against the ledger board and you can have like about an eighth inch of space, so just a little bit of play. Now if we see like a quarter inch of play, not that big of a deal. We're not going not gonna to make any huge thing about it, but in many cases we see a lot of space. I'm talking like a half inch, maybe even an inch where the ledger board is way too far away from the deck, that becomes a safety issue. That, that hanger is not going to support nearly as much as it's supposed to. That is something we would write up. And then finally, I, I guess you can't really blame the joist hanger or the person, well, I can, <laughs> is missing joist hangers entirely. Frequently we find them missing or you've got say a built up beam and someone needed to order a big triple hanger or something like that and they just forgot to do it. I, I gotta assume someone just forgot to do this and they weren't being negligent. Okay, that covers my list of the most common joist hanger installation defects. I hope this was helpful. If there's any I missed, uh, write a note in the comments. I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.